Hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Eric and I'm a wellness specialist with the Health Plan. And today we're talking time management. Full disclosure, I am not a time management expert. Like many of us, it's something I struggle with daily. However, I am a pretty diligent researcher and I dove into several of the most popular time management strategies out there. Most of the advice you'll find is pretty similar and it's about adopting some type of system to optimize your daily routine. There are tons and tons of books, podcasts, and TED Talks that will offer this type of advice. You could spend months, even years, trying out each one to see what works for you. However, I was looking for something different, and I found it in a book written by the author Oliver Berkman. The book is called 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals, and it offers up a different approach to time management, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Time management is probably something we're all familiar with. Today, we're going to discuss how traditional time management strategies can sometimes do more harm than good and how we can move past them. We'll explore a different take on productivity, introduce some new time management ideas, and put it all together at the end as we consider how to incorporate these new strategies. We've all heard about the importance of using time wisely, but what does using time wisely even mean? Usually it means cranking up our productivity and optimizing every minute. But what if we shifted our focus away from outright productivity and instead focused on living in a way that aligns with our goals and core values? This shift in perspective lays the groundwork for a new approach to how we use our time. Oliver Berkman emphasizes this approach in his book and encourages us to find ways to use our time more meaningfully. Traditional time management methods like those from experts David Allen and James Clear focus a lot on maximizing every minute. They involve creating detailed schedules, setting lots of goals, and constantly striving to do more and more and more. While these strategies have their strengths, they can sometimes focus too heavily on getting things done quickly rather than thoughtfully. This constant grind contributes to stress and burnout, and today, our society ties up a lot of value in our ability to hustle. I think it's worthwhile to take a step back and reevaluate our relationship to time. After reading Berkman's book, I identified three key principles that outline his approach to time management. Stated simply, these principles are embrace your limits, accept uncertainty, and prioritize. The first key principle and the overarching theme of Berkman's book is to embrace our limits. Frankly, our time is limited. There are only 24 hours in a day, and while those hours look different for everyone, they're never guaranteed. For me, trying to cram as much as possible in each day, day after day, causes a lot of anxiety. Many of us feel pressured to maximize our waking hours. Work doesn't let up, we're trying to eat right, sleep for eight hours, get into the gym, launch a side project, have a social life, make time for family, make time for ourselves, and it feels harder and harder to stay on top of our to-do lists. Just trying to keep up can get overwhelming quickly. Embracing our limits means acknowledging that we can't do everything. This acceptance helps us focus on tasks and experiences that matter the most, rather than being distracted by everything we can't get done. Facing our limitations can be uncomfortable, but it's crucial. By accepting that we can't do it all, we can channel our energy into what truly matters and make more deliberate choices about how we spend our time. This can help us let go of the guilt we associate with uncompleted tasks or unfulfilled ambitions. For me, this is especially difficult to acknowledge. I'm a sucker for a well-crafted how-to video. Five minutes on YouTube and I'm convinced that building a mahogany dining table is more reasonable and affordable than driving to Ikea. Never mind the fact that I consider a set of level shelves a personal win, I have zero woodworking tools and I live in a one bedroom apartment with no dining room and zero room for all the tables that I see online. Unfortunately, social media reinforces this type of thinking. We now have a high definition window into every special interest imaginable. People, places, and things that once seemed entirely out of reach are now virtually in the palm of our hands. It has never been easier to entertain the idea of taking up a niche hobby for which we lack the time, experience, or equipment. There's nothing wrong with trying new things, but leaning too heavily into distraction can quickly eat up our limited time. 
For me, taking a step back and acknowledging these truths has removed a significant mental weight and has allowed me to enjoy some awesome content with a perspective more firmly grounded in reality. The second principle is to accept uncertainty. My background is in emergency medical services, so uncertainty used to be baked into my day to day, but that doesn't mean that I can't be caught off guard. On the day of my wedding, our late night pizza delivery ended up at our apartment and not the wedding venue. Despite several emails and assurances from the restaurant, the delivery driver ended up across town. However, after a moment of panic, I was able to embrace the situation for what it was. Will the wedding guests notice that the pizza arrived late? Nah, they didn't even know it was coming. Had it never arrived, I was one of the few people who would have ever noticed. Accepting uncertainty means recognizing that we can't predict or control the future, and no amount of planning can guarantee a perfect outcome. This acceptance can help us let go of the anxiety we feel when we try to organize our lives. When we accept that uncertainty is a part of life, we can open ourselves up to the possibilities that arise, even if they don't exactly align with our plans. This shift in perspective helps us to cultivate patience and to engage more fully with the present. Sometimes stuff happens and what's important is how you respond. Finally, let's talk about prioritization. Prioritization is not just about being efficient. It involves choosing what aligns with our values and focusing our efforts on those areas. Sometimes this means focusing only on the most meaningful tasks and experiences, even if it means letting go of other less important ones. This also means confronting our fear of missing out and accepting that some projects and opportunities will always remain unfinished as long as we learn to embrace the joy of missing out. By prioritizing effectively, we can ensure that our time is spent on activities that enrich our lives and contribute to our well-being. Our choices matter. By choosing to do any one thing, we're simultaneously excluding all the other possible things we could be doing at that moment. By default, most of the time, we are going to miss out. That means that what we choose to do with our limited time is even more valuable than we realize. The important part is deciding what to miss out on in the first place. Berkman underscores this by saying, the core challenge of managing our limited time isn't about how to get everything done. That's never gonna happen. But how to decide most wisely what not to do and how to feel at peace not doing it. When we combine these principles, embracing our limits, accepting uncertainty, and prioritizing what matters, we can transform our approach to time management. Instead of viewing time as a resource to be optimized, we can see it as a journey to be experienced. This shift helps us find fulfillment in the present moment, rather than putting off our happiness to some time in the future when we have it all figured out. Accepting that our time is limited runs counter to a common sentiment that is widely shared, that there are no limits, there's no obstacles that we can and that we can accomplish everything we set our minds to. Unfortunately, this conflicts with the central argument in Berkman's book. His perspective is a drastic departure from typical time management advice, but it is worth considering. Acknowledging our limitations can help us move past the idea that there will always be time to fit everything in. This means that we may have to let go of some of our milder ambitions in order to realize our larger goals. We may let some people down, we may drop the ball every now and then, and we may not be able to please everyone all the time, but we should embrace our limitations if our goal is to make the most of the time we have. This way of thinking may seem depressing or stressful, but Berkman argues that it's actually liberating. He feels it should be a huge weight off of our shoulders and states that adopting a limit embracing attitude to time means organizing your days with the understanding that you definitely won't have time for everything you want to do or that other people want you to do. And so at the very least, you can stop beating yourself up for failing. Missing out is what makes our choices meaningful in the first place. Every decision to use a portion of our time on anything represents the sacrifice of all the other ways in which we could have spent that time, but didn't. As we make hundreds of small choices throughout the day, as Berkman puts it, we are building a life. By integrating these time management principles, I hope to be a bit more intentional about how my life is put together. If you want to explore all the tools that Berkman offers to help you build a more intentional life, I highly recommend his book, 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. 
It offers a refreshing take on managing time in a way that truly reflects what's important in our lives. If reading isn't your thing, he has a couple of TED Talks and presentations available online. How to Stop Fighting Against Time is a personal favorite of mine, and it summarizes the central theme in his book. As we wrap up, I'd like to leave you with five questions to reflect on that come straight from the book. Number one, where in your life or work are you currently pursuing comfort when what's called for is a little discomfort? Number two, are you holding yourself to and judging yourself by standards of productivity or performance that are impossible to meet? Number three, in what ways have you yet to accept the fact that you are who you are, not the person you think you ought to be? Number four, in which areas of your life are you still holding back until you feel like you know what you're doing? And number five, how would you spend your days differently if you didn't care so much about seeing your actions reach fruition? Food for thought. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this presentation offered some new insights and inspired you to consider a more meaningful approach to time management. Have a wonderful day.